Hi guys, welcome back to another Steam free to play walkthrough. Today we have the Parish Meshenik, or something like that. It's supposed to be a scary interactive uh, text game with multiple endings, but it has achievements. So we're going to try to get them all, but no promises. We'll see. Um, an inter original interactive narrative by Sean Arnold. As always, I'll leave a link to the game in the description if you want to try it for yourself. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel grow and I appreciate it so much. All right. For the best experience, please use headphones. Click the top left arrow to control the volume. Boom. Loud. So we can all be scared together. And turn it up for you guys as well. I don't want to be the only one getting scared here. Suffer with me. There we go. Now you guys should be hearing it as well. Ooh, something's knocking. November 9th, 1962. Oh, we don't have to worry about it. That's way before we were born. No problems. Haha. -ha. Sucks to suck. Oh, we got an achievement. The beginning. Your name is Vector Pavlov. You are an oceanographer aboard the Soviet frigate, the Perimeshchnik. You have been tasked with mapping the ocean floor of a region in the Arctic Sea. Oh, we have dogs too. Pavlov's dogs. Dog. You are currently sitting on the cot in your personal quarter. Quarters. It is a small room with just enough space for a bed and a small desk. A torn envelope lies on your desk. You are fiddling with a small silver locket containing a picture of your wife and daughter. I right, click the envelope. The envelope has been- oh, that's achievement. Replaced. The envelope has been torn open without much care. There's a letter inside. Dear Vector. I thought my name was Victor. Uh, I don't know how much longer I can do this. I haven't seen or heard from you in months. I understand that the work you do is important, but you should be here. If not for me, then for Maya. She needs a father. I wanted it to be you, but you left. I know the union needed you, but I wish you had stayed when I asked. Since you left, Leonid has been coming more by more often. He's helping me raise Maya. Just the other day, he, she called him father. I wanted to correct her, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. Because in some ways, he is her father. He's always been there and you haven't. She is replacing you with him. I still love you, but you're losing Maya. Please come back with love, Uliana. Damn, what's his face being Jody? Still my woman and my child, Leonid, bitch. Put the letter down. Next. You grab the notebook and leave the room. You head toward the mess hall where the rest of the crew is sitting eating dinner. When you arrive at the door, you hear loud muffled voices on the other side. You may enter whenever you are ready. You open the door and grab some food. Tonight it is mashed potatoes and peas. You sit down at the table and open your notebook. There is a chart of the nearby sea inside. As you look over your notes, there is a loud burst of laughter from the crew. Let's look at the chart. The charts are maps of the ocean floor that were made using sonography. Something about the charts of this region doesn't make sense to you. In the charts, there is a large body of mass at the bottom of the sea that doesn't look like any natural formation you have ever seen. This alone perplexed you. That doesn't look like an, any natural formation you have seen. Oh, wow, well, i just read that again. There's a large mass of body at the... This alone perplexed you, but the second chart you made showed that the mass moved. To be safe, you made a third chart. In the final chart, you saw, you saw what appeared to be a chunk of mass break off from the main body. The shape of the mass does not look like any known animal. Says there is no information on any plant-based life that can move that fast. You aren't sure if you accidentally discovered a new species of aquatic life or if your sensors are on the fritz again. It's notorious B.I.G. from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. It's mystery solved. God dang. Alright, let's look out the laughter. At the other table, the crew is laughing at Yurinev, who has two different plates for his peas and potatoes. A bellowing laugh fills the room. You look over and see Oberev, who is grinning ear to ear. Yurinev begins gesturing towards his plates. Yurinev Ruslanovich is a deckhand on the Paramishnik. Paramishnik. I don't know how to say that word. Jesus. He joined the Soviet Navy at a young age, mainly for the free grub and the pay. He has a mild case of brumotactilophobia. 
also known as fear of different foods touching. This fear often makes him the target of ridicule from the other crew members. Oberev, oh God, Dennis Ovich is the resident mechanic from the, for the Parameshnik. He has been working hard on the Parameshnik for six years and has grown to be very fond of the ship. You once heard him cooing at the ship's engine when you <laughs> walked by the boiler room, like his baby. He has a very large build, but he is very friendly. You have not talked to him much, but you could see that Oberev was a very jovial person. The others seem to enjoy talking to him. He is one of a kind. No one could replace him. Except for the monster. It's very simple. He here, potato here. He never touched potatoes. <laughs> You're never attempts to explain it anxiously. It's an abomination. It's an abomination. What's wrong with that? Nothing wrong, Gary. Hold up. Did you hear that? Mortar fire! Oprah flings a few peas in the Yurnev smashed potatoes. What a jerk! Uh, Blaka! Why do why you do this? The room bursts into laughter as, Yur, as Yurnev scrambles to pick the peas out of his potatoes. Tell Oprah to lay off Yurnev. Ah, come on, Chuvak. It is all good fun. Yuri is good guy. Oprah reply with a chuckle. After exchanging a few words with some of the crew, you wrap up your mill and leave the mess hall to go back to your room. When you get to your personal quarters, you sit down at your desk and begin to look over your notes and the charts of the region. After a few hours, you notice your eyelids grow heavier and heavier. You start to think about sleep. Sick. You crawl into bed and begin to fall asleep. Great success. Ah! Whoa. You are awakened by a deafening scream. You clamber out of bed and rush toward the source. You arrive to find a stunned Oberev, mouth agape and eyes wide open, staring at the supply closet. Look inside. You get as you get closer to the closet, you hear a you are hit with a pungent smell. You slowly peer inside and your jaw immediately drops. The walls are drenched in blood, intestines are strewn about the shelves like ornaments and blood pulls on the floor. One look at the intestines and <laughs> intestines and you realize something terrible. It's human. It's Yuri. Hey. What are you doing hanging in here? You feel your stomach turn as you stumble backwards. Gagging, you lean on the wall for support. The torrent of footsteps is heard as the other crew members arrive. After a few minutes, the entire crew is at the supply closet. You recollect yourself and begin to observe the others. Some of the crew grab Oberev, still frozen in shock, and attempt to pull him away from the scene. Others gather in small groups and begin whispering. It probably just animal, right? Think Yuri, another crew member interjects. Does that look like animal intestine? No. You wait for more of the crew to arrive. Soon, Captain Stepanov, Captain Ramir Stepanov is the commanding officer of the Paramesternik is rare, he rarely ever fraternizes with the rest of the crew and instead prefers to sit in his quarters alone, drinking the night away. Other than that, you do know, do not know much about the captain, other than he stays out of your way and you stay out of his. No one is missing. Notice one, as you, oh wait, let me read the rest of this, out arrives and demands an explanation. As you look at the 13 crew members around you, you notice one odd detail that stands out to you. No one is missing. Call it out. Damn. Okay, we're gonna do all the top choices first and we'll go back and do the other choices. So I can remember it. The captain frowns as you explain, oh God, so much blood. How did this happen? Oh, there's paranoia meter in the top right. The captain frowns as you explain that the blood came from a human, but no one on board seems to be missing. What are you suggesting? That this is from one of us? He gestures towards the pulling blood in the supply closet. That is, you cut in gruffly as he tries to dismiss you. We are only, he we are only human for, humans for miles. It could come from no one else. That's the thing. We're on the boat with the thing, we're screwed. The captain lets out a deep sigh and covers his tie and covers his face with his hand. He waits a few moments before turning to face you again. Yo, Moyo, what do you suggest then? Run tests on the blood. Put fire next to it. Stepanov gives you an incredulous look. 
blood test? Is this necessary? We don't have a lot of testing kits. I don't want to waste kits on Hunch. We need to narrow down the suspects. Um, a paranoia is going up. That's good. Blood test will narrow down list of suspects. Blood could have come from anyone here. But it is human, and we are only human for miles. So it had to come from one of us. You wait for Stepanov's response. Captain Stepanov squints as he thinks it over. After a few moments, he reluctantly nods to you and then address, turns to address the crew. Vector will perform tests on the blood. Until we get results, everyone will be in the mess hall. As the crew heads towards the mess hall, you grab a sample of blood and head to the medical room. Grab a blood test kit and the medical files for all the crew members. You plan to use blood type to narrow down the suspect. You start the test and begin logging the blood types of each crew member. As you are doing this, the first step of the test is completed. Begin the second step. Okay, you start speculating about where the blood could have come from. As you wait for the results of the test, who could it be from? Couldn't it be Stepanov's? Was it Obrev? Oh, I'm like thinking about all the people. Uh, what are the results? As soon as the test completed, you compare it to the testing manual. The blood type is somewhat rare, A negative. You scan your notes of the crew's blood type and find that the only two crew members who have this, this blood type, Obrev Denisovich and Yurnev Ruslanovic, report to the mess hall. As you walk to the mess hall, you try to make sense of what you are even trying to say. If any person lost that amount of blood that was in the room, they would be dead. But you saw Oberev and Yurinev at the supply closet. It couldn't be from one of them, could it? You arrive at the door to the mess hall. They are the thing! We are so screwed! You enter the mess hall to find the captain waiting for you. Some are eating breakfast, others still seem to be in shock. Captain Stepanov looks up at you as you walk in. Well, Victor, what did you find? You look around the room and spot Obrev, who is sitting at the table, arms crossed and staring straight ahead. Next to him is Yurinev, who is eating his leftovers from a plate in front of him. The plate contains both peas and tomatoes. Wait a second. He shouldn't be eating plates with peas and potatoes. So he's the bad guy. I already said I'm going to do the top options first. I think I should do the second option, but I'm going to do all the top first so I can keep up with it. As you share your results, the crew turns around to look at the two suspects. Oberev doesn't fidget, and Yurinev continues to eat his potatoes and peas. Captain Stepanov frowns. You notice one crew member staring at Yurinev as he eats with a baffled look. He begins to speak. Y Yuri, your peas touch potato. At the uttering of these words, Oberev awakes from his daze and begins to glare at Yurnev. The room is, <laughs> well, at least they noticed it too, overcome with a deathly science as the crew takes in this information. Yurnev scoffs and looks around at everyone before answering. Yeah, so? So the really Yuri has fear of food touching. He hates for peas to touch potato, Oberev exclaims. Oberev slowly stands up. Oberev's massive build looms over the much smaller Yurnev. As he steps forward, you are not him. You are not really Yuri. You're not my friend. Oberev lunges at Yurnev, clasping his hands around Yurnev's neck. The rest of the crew rushes towards Oberev to stop him. As the crew tries to pull Oberev away, Yurnev lets out an unearthly scream as, ah, I knew it. As his eyes roll into the back of his head, Yurnev's body begins thrashing as a black liquid begins oozing out of his eyes. His body contorts unnaturally as it begins transforming into something not of this world. Oh, we're screwed. My paranoia is 29. The crew backs away in fear as they watch Oberev struggle with the thrashing Yurinev. After a few moments, Yurinev's body goes limp. Suddenly, a tangle of black, jet black tentacles spout out of Yurinev's back. Some of the crew let out terrified yelps as they scramble for the door. The creature lets out one last shriek before slashing Oberev's leg with its tentacle and scurrying off, escaping through one of the vents. The crew look towards the vents, confounded by the horror they just witnessed. That sucks. We let it escape! We're so screwed! After a few moments, a crew member runs over to Oberev and begins to treat his leg. There's some shouting to your left. You turn to see another crew member lying on the floor, blood spurting from his neck. A few people put him on a gurney and cart him out of the mess hall. As you come to your senses, you begin to come up with a plan. The plan is to evacuate? Great plan. We're doing it. 
We have to abandon ship. Take lifeboats and get out of here. Captain Stepanov stares blankly ahead, almost as if in a daze. As you speak, he looks at you blankly. Slowly, he begins to shake his head, he, his blank expression gradually turning to anger. First off, Vector, you are not captain. I am. Second, we can't abandon ship. Not because of some, some animal. That was not just an animal. That was a monster. It was Yuri. It replaced him. It could do it again. How do we not know there, there isn't another one among us then, Vector? If we bring it with us, the situation is the same. We bring everyone. The blood we found was A negative. Oberev is the only crew member with this blood type now. While he is in shock, he is acting strange. We bring everyone. No, there are too many important charts and equipment on this ship to just abandon it. We find creature, we kill creature. That's in order. Oh god, the captain sucks. As Captain Stepanov walks away, he orders two, crews, two crew members to accompany him. You look after him with disdain. You look around at the rest of the crew as the captain leaves. The rest of the crew is nervously fidgeting. Some stare at others with suspicion, eyes darting back and forth, asserting who they can trust. Others are already huddling in small groups, whispering frantically while occasionally glancing nervously at the others. You watch with dismay as some of the crew sneaks away. You need to act now. Okay, you know the crew's best chance at survival is to escape before the creature can replace someone else, but Captain Stepanov won't order an evacuation. Oberev is sitting in the corner. His leg has been freshly bandaged and he is alone. What do you do? Ask Oberev for help. Hey, we got an achievement. Three out of 13 boys were making it. You run over to Oberev, who is lying on the ground, clutching his bleeding leg, and ask him if he can walk. He looks up at you with a grimace and replies, It's just scratch. It will take more than shallow cuts to take me down. Good, let's get off the ship. With a furrowed brow, Oberev begins to speak. The captain said, Stepanov doesn't know shit. We'll all die if we stay here. You saw what they did to Yuri. We need, we stay here and we're next. Oberov is silent for a few moments. Perhaps you are right. That thing is crafty, and I doubt it replaced Yuri because it wanted new friends. So what do you plan to do? Escape on the lifeboat? Genius. Vector, the lifeboat's motor is broken. I've been working on it, but even if it weren't, you just want to leave our comrades behind? You look around the empty room, and now turn back to Stobrev with a solemn look. Everyone is gone. The monster could have already transformed into one of them. Our best chance was to evacuate everyone after the attack, but that chance is gone now. Oberev sternly look, looks sternly at you before answering. Alright, what you say is probably true. I am in. We don't have any paddles, Oberev chuckles somberly. That incompetent jury lost them the last time we took it out, so I need the tools to fix the lifeboat's engine. Follow me. Oberev walks briskly to his room. You follow close behind, but have trouble keeping up with him. You are amazed that he is able to walk so fast given his injury. Oh god. When you enter his room, he begins rummaging for his toolkit. After searching for a moment, he faintly smiles as he pulls out a clinking bag. Aha! Here it is. These tools have never let me down. His smile quickly fades as you both hear a strange whirr in the distance. There is another shrill scream that almost sounds almost human. You turn to Vector. I turn to Vector. I am Vector. What? Time to go. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. You begin- <laughs> I'm body swapping now. I'm the monster. You begin to head towards the lifeboat with Oberev. As you come turn a corner, you notice a trail of blood that leads into a room. A look of dread overcomes Oberev's face, but he attempts to reassure you with a nod. You inch towards the door and slowly begin to peer inside. As you look inside, Oberev lets out an audible- <gasps> gasp. Inside the room, you see a pile of bodies in the corner of the room. Nice! Sick. Your eyes lock onto one of the bodies. You recognize him as Auteur, a young boy who worked in the kitchen. His skin is pale white, and his dead eyes stare back at you. As the creature feasts on his body, his mouth hangs up. That's not good. It's almost as if he was trying to scream for help. You notice the second creature walk towards the body and begin eating. Suddenly, you feel a tug on your shoulder, and Oberoi pulls you away and begins pushing you into another room. You notice a sign on the door says Armory. Once the both of you are in the armory, Oberoi locks the door behind you. New plan. We blow the blinds up. 
His voice trembles, but not without, not with fear. His fists are clenched, and he looks at you with determination. They kill my friends? They devile my ship? I blow them up. Oh god, Obrev. Holds an explosive charge. You look up at him with concern. Is that safe? No, it's not. Of course it is safe. You set charges, you get away from charges, they blow up safe. Now let's go. Get going. <laughs> Great logic. As he turns to leave, you realize that you don't have any food or medical supplies. Wait, we need supplies. Oberev looks back at you. That is true. Alright, you get supplies, I repair ship and arm bomb. Quickly now. I don't want to split up. That's a bad idea. You both leave the armory and head your separate ways. You rush to the kitchen and grab some emergency rations and sprint to your room. As you run, you hear another low roar. You arrive at the door to your room. You open the door to your room. There is no one there. There is a large knife lying on the top of your desk. You often use it to open letters or carve when you are bored. You grab the knife, figuring a weapon might come in handy. You catch a glint in the corner of your eye and you look to find your golden locket. It is open, and your daughter's face is smiling out at you. You pause for a moment before closing the locket and stashing it in your pocket. Head towards the lifeboat. As you run, your mind begins to wander frantically. What is it? Please don't die, Oberev. What if he's already dead? I have to make it. What was that? Please don't find me. Just the wind. What if I don't make it? Okay. As your mind races, you begin to seriously ponder. I always feel like... Where, where is it? I guess we'll go with where it is. I'm trying to go with all the top comments. God dang it. You begin to wonder where it is. I wish there was a quick save. That'd be sick. Because that, oh, I'm going to have to play through it so many times because there's other options. Ah, okay. It could be anyone, possibly even anything. There's no way to know what it can mimic. It could be an inanimate object like a plant or a chair. The only th the thought of it hiding in the plain sight terrifies you and y you begin to look around suspiciously. You need to get out of here. The lifeboat is just around the corner. Turn the corner. The lifeboat is now in view. Next to you, next to the boat, Oberev is waiting. He is anxiously fidget, fidgeting with his wrench before he see, finally sees you. He begins to smile grimly. As you get closer, you slow down before stopping altogether. You can't help but think about how the monster can mimic anyone. What took you so long? Well, hurry in. The ship is about to blow in 20 minutes. Oberev stops for a second and looks at you inquisitively. What is wrong? Okay. Ask him if it's really him. What are you saying? You think I am that thing? Obrev sighs. I suppose you are right to think so. He pauses for a moment before continuing. Not sure how to prove I am not monster, but I can tell you I hate that thing and will kill it. The explosives are armed. Believe me when I tell you. It will bring great pleasure to watch that son of a bitch burn an explosion, and that is why I am not monster. Alright, believe him. You board the ship. He smiles as you board the lifeboat. See, not so bad, right? Oberev looks at you with a warm smile. Now well, let's get going. He walks over on the lease mechanism and pulls a switch. There's a loud mech clank of metal on the, as the lifeboat jerks back. However, the mechanisms don't detach. Oberev's smile is quickly replaced by a panic look. What's wrong? The release mechanics are jammed, probably because of the cold. Yo moyo. What does yo moyo mean? Oberev takes out his tools and begins working at the mechanisms, locking the lifeboat in place. You hear another roar from the other side of the ship. Hurry! Shut it, Victor! I am working fast as I can. As he works, the sound of clanging metal echoes throughout the ship. You hear another roar. You aren't sure, but you think it was closer this time. Oberev looks back at you with a worried grin. I think we got his attention, comrade. You can do this. Keep going. Please. We need to live. I want to live. Oberev turns around and to keep working, ten minutes pass by, but it feels like an eternity. You hear another roar, much closer this time. In the distance, you see a shadow growing even larger. You look worriedly at Oberev. Oberev is coming! Just a second. Got it. Puyakali! <laughs> Oberev hits, jumps back onto the boat. Hit that switch! Hit the switch! In an instant. Oh man, I don't like that hyphen. Uh, that's the first thing I saw. That hyphen is the hyphen of doom. We are so fucked. In an instant, the lifeboat is released and falls violently towards the ocean water. The, I, it hits the water with a deafening smack, creating a massive splash and soaking you with ice cold water. Oberev flicks the switch on the engine. With a roar, the engine sputters, sputters to life and Oberev steers the boat away from the ship. A smile stretches across your face as you watch the pair of mesh 
Eris Meshnik grow smaller as you get further away. We did it! We're going to make it hyphen of doom! Boom! Ah, big boom! Yes! Is that the big boat dying or is that me dying? Yes! Did we make it? The Parameshnik is swallowed up in a fiery explosion. As your ears ring from the intense sound of the explosion, you feel something whiz past your head. You open and close your mouth rapidly, trying to fix your ringing ears. Once the ringing begins to fade away, you look up at Obrev, who is staring past you with a look of horror. Your toes suddenly feel cold and wet. Damn it, did it poke a hole in our ship? Look down. Comrade, there's a leak. Damn it. You look at the front of the boat and see a hole where water is gushing forth. You come to the realization that the flu that what flew past you was shrapnel from the explosion. It must have punched a hole in the bow, the bow. The boat is sinking and you need to get to land now. There, steer towards that ice sheet. That seems like a God dang it. Oberev steers towards the ice as the boat starts to sink. As the boat rams into the ice sheet, you and Oberev lurch forward. In the crash, you are knocked down to your hands and feet. Before the boat sinks, you and uh, Oberev manage to scramble onto the icy shore. Panning, you stand up and look at the ice sheet around you. Oberev is next to you, gasping for air. You t both take a moment to catch your breath before silently nodding at each other. Well, where is home? Oh, we got another achievement. Sick. We're... So many achievements in. 4 out of 13. Not bad. We're going to do this. Oberev points slowly towards the rising sun. Without exchanging words, you begin walking in that direction. Oberev follows closely behind. As you walk forward, you can only think of one thing. Maya, I'm coming, and I won't be replaced. Oh, we got a happy ending. Sick. Nice. The Perishmik next gig. All right, so now we got 5 out of 13. This one's going to go faster because I got one ending. Um... Yeah, now this time I'm just going to skip to the answers pretty much since there's no, like, quick save. And we're going to get all the things. I don't think I need to look at the envelopes or anything, to be honest. Until we get to something else, I'm not going to really read it. Say nothing. You stick to the corner of the room and finish up your meal. The crew teases your nev a few more times before finishing their meals and heading back out. And you, as you pour over your notes for an hour, you realize that the rest of the crew is gone and your food is cold. You clean up your dishes and leave the mess hall to go back to your room. When you get to your personal quarters, you sit down at your desk and begin to look over your notes and charts of the region. After a few hours, you notice your... Okay, this is back. Okay, that was the same thing. You crawl into bed and begin to fall asleep, and then I wake up and there's a dead person. Ah! Whoa! Look inside. It's a human. Sick. You wait for more of the crew to arrive. Keep to yourself. You stand quietly as the others debate what happened. Captain Stepanov frowns as the crew members continue arguing over what happened. Spotting you, he walks across the hall where you are. Victor, you are a scientist. What do you make of this? Tell him what you know. You explain that the blood came from one of the crew. Doubt begins to creep over the captain's face. Stepanov lets out a deep sigh. Yo, Moyo, what do you suggest then? Ah, oh, it didn't matter what I chose for that one. We don't have a lot of testing kits, blah, 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 blah. Oh, it will put the crew at ease. The crew is on edge. If nothing else, blood tests will let them think we are uh, we have a plan of some kind. It will help put them at ease and do some wonders for morale. You wait for Stepanov's response. Captain Stepanov squints as he thinks it over. After a few moments, he reluctantly nods. Blah, 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 blah. That's the same thing. We do a blood test. Second step. It's A negative, probably, yeah. Open the door. Wait a second, he's eating his potatoes with his peas. Not acting like a child anymore. Achievement, we got an achievement. Observant, tell him that he's eating his peas and his potatoes. You notice that Uranev is eating potatoes and peas on the same plate, despite his fear of food touching. You watch him eat a few spoonfuls and are shocked to see him eat both foods in one bite. Vector, why now? He never eats his food together like that. What's changed? Vector, an angry Captain Snevanov, interrupts your thoughts. You look around to see the entire crew staring at you, waiting in anticipation for the results. We're waiting. Call out, Yurinev. Yuri, your peas touch your potatoes and you still eat. As you speak, Oberov comes out of the, his daze and begins to stare at the Yurinev. 
The room is overcome with a deathly science of the silence as the crew processes this information. Yurinev scoffs and looks around at everyone before answering. Oh, this is the same. Obrev starts choking his butt. Okay, not of this world, creature, something, something. We need to evacuate. It's not an animal. We bring everyone except for Obrev, my friend I just escaped with. Screw him, I guess. The blood we found was A negative. Only one here that is A negative is Obrev, so we can't trust him. <laughs> Dang, but he's such a good guy. We take everyone but him. That may be true, but we can't leave. There are too many important charts and equipment, blah, 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 blah. You look after him with disdain. We need to act now. Or we're definitely not going to ask him for help when we try to escape on my own. Uh, path of least resistance achievement. After seeing what you it did to Uranev, you are now choosing to stay here. You know choosing to stay here is the same as choosing to die. You slowly start edging towards the kitchen as the others coalesce into small groups. No one seems to notice you. They're too busy observing Oberev and whispering amongst themselves. Finally, you arrive at the door. Open the door. You enter the kitchen. My paranoia is skyrocketing on this run. You enter the kitchen and race towards the cupboards. You swing the cupboards open and begin grabbing emergency rations, stuffing them into your coat pocket. When you are done, you leave the room. You exit out the back door and begin running to your room. You see another crew member sneaking around on his own. He gives you a knowing nod before briskly walking away. You arrive at the door to your room. Open the door. You open the door and enter your room. There is a large carving knife lying on the top of your desk. You grab the knife, figuring a weapon might come in handy. Oh, well, this is different. As you grab the locket, you accidentally knock some papers off on your desk. You look over and see it as the charts of the, ocean, the sea bottom in this area. The charts were strange readings. Read over the charts. You remember the unidentified body of mass that showed up on your chart in the charts earlier. You start wondering if it had something to do with the creature. As you read over the charts, you begin to note, piece together theories. In the third chart, a chunk of mass broke from the main body and appeared to be moving. You study the chart for a few more moments. To your shock, you notice that the chart indicates a slight altitude change for the mass. Was it moving upwards towards the ship? If this thing came from the seafloor, it might be a smaller part of a much bigger organism. Leave the room. You race out of the room and start heading towards the lifeboat. The lifeboat is only a few more turns away, but as you turn the corner, you spot something in the distance. There of the crew is, three of the crew is walking into a room, but that is not what stops you in your tracks. Behind them, there is something more sinister, slowly crawling across the ceiling. They're screwed. A hulking mess of writhing black worm stalks them and follows them into the room. The creature. You immediately dart behind the corner and cover your mouth with your hands, desperately trying to muffle and slip and the sound of your breath. After a moment, you work up the cor courage to peek your head around the corner to look, but the monster is nowhere to be found. Wait. Suddenly, you hear a terrified scream and a loud deafening bang that reverberates through the hall. A gunshot. There is a silence for a moment. Suddenly, there is another shot and a blood curdling shriek fills the air. It, unlike anything you have ever heard before, frightening, wicked, and unearthly. Abruptly, you hear a flurry of wax. Whack, 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 whack. Followed by the sound of flesh being spliced. There are a few agonizing screams and then nothing. Your breath becomes short and erratic as you listen to them die. We should probably run past while they're dying. That'd be a good idea. You begin to slowly back away. After a few steps, you turn around and race back the way you came. You will have to go a long way to get to the lifeboat. As you race through the halls, you notice small blood splatters decorate, decorate the walls. The creature has been busy without even thinking. You start to run faster, upping with every step. As you run, you see a figure in the distance. It looks like Oberov. Keep running towards the lifeboat. As you turn the corner, you see the lifeboat in front of you. A wave of relief washes over you you as you run towards it and get in. However, relief quickly turns to panic as you realize the engine has been ripped open. You try to start it, but nothing seems to work. You curse vehemently at the engine, but that does nothing except make noise. I will paddle, but the paddles are gone. There's still a chance. You can just use a paddle. You scan the entire boat, but can't find a single paddle. You curse, but find a large pile, pole. It will have to do. You notice the lifeboat is still locked in place by some sort of release mechanism. There's a switch labeled release. Flip the switch. There's a loud metallic clang as the boat jerks forward. 
but the mechanism doesn't release. The bitter cold must have frozen, broken the release mechanisms. You frantically try to pry open the me mechanisms with your bare hand, but the locks won't budge. In the last ditch effort, you bang the locks with your fist, your knife, a pipe, but all to no avail. You get out of the lifeboat and slope down against the wall, defeated. There is no hope. As you sit alone with your thoughts, you begin to realize that Oberef could have fixed life the boat, or any of the mechanics, if they had been with you. Maybe you could have survived. You could have seen your daughter again. Your vision gets blurry as tears begin to well in your eyes. You let out a frustrated yell. Rah! Your yell is answered by a low roar. You realize it's from the monster, but you have already accepted defeat and don't try to run away. You bury your face in your hands. You can hear footsteps approaching you, you but don't look up. There is a hissing noise and you feel a for firm tug on the back of your clothes. You are lifted up off the floor. As you look upwards at your captor, you see a black mass of ever-mutating worms like strands. It is both solid and shapeless at the same time. You look into its black, soulless eyes and then close your eyes. It lets out a blood-curdling shriek. Stab that sucker! You take out your knife and attempt to drive it into the creature's head. However, the writhing black worms form a hole before the blade even hits, almost as if it was purposefully avoiding the blade. The creature howls at you. This is it. You accept your fate. The creature opens its mouth and there is another blood-curdling shriek as you are enshrouded in darkness, and then silence. For a few moments you hear nothing, see nothing, feel nothing, but then you begin to hear voices of humans, all talking with one another advising something, telling it what to do. Some of the voices sound familiar, others foreign. After a while, you begin to realize that, the, that one of the voices belongs to Uranev and the others of, on the crew. Their voices comfort you. The black void clears. Slowly. Oh, we got a hunger achievement. Sick. 8 out of 13, boys. Slowly, the darkness surrounding you begins to fade. You, are, you can see the hulls of the ship and begin walking towards the captain's quarters. As you look down, you see a writhing mass of black worms where your hand should be. It slowly becomes a hand. You begin to realize what you have become, that you are no longer you, but we. And we are hungry. Nice. Alright. Only five more achievements to get, boy. That's pretty good, though. We're making pretty good progress. And I think I have a good idea where some of them I'm going to have to replay through, I'm sure. Like, I probably have to attack Oberev at one point. Um, and do some other things, but some of these choices don't even matter, though. And, but right now we got cause of mutiny. I know that'll give me a few achievements as well. Look inside. It's human. Blah blah blah. blah. Mutiny. Don't care about the test. We need to narrow down. Uh, medical room. Begin the second step the door. Wait a second. He's eating the peas and potatoes. Nefarious. Alright, Oberov gets attacked and then we do a mutiny. Mutiny time, baby. We bring everyone. Organize a mutiny. Achievement. M is for mutiny. 9 out of 13. Everyone. Stepanov cares more about his equipment than our lives. We escape now. And we blow up the ship so that the creature cannot follow. It'll kill us and replace us like Yuri if we don't. So we have to. Several members of the crew begin to get more riled up as you talk. It's time for a mutiny. As you finish your speech, some answer your call for a mutiny with a thunderous roar. Others shrink away and flee from the scene. You look around the room to see five members of the crew flocking toward you. They stand in front of you with fist clench, waiting for, your or waiting for orders. Give orders. Five members of the crew have joined your mutiny. You order two to raid the armory and rig the ship below. The other two will get other food from the kitchen and grab other supplies, and the last one will go with you to secure the lifeboat. You don't quite trust them yet enough yet to let them secure the boat without you. Leave the mess hall. You leave the mess hall, you tell the mutineer mutineer with you that you need to pick some up some items in the room first. You walk briskly towards your room, the mutineer falling closely behind. You are not sure what his name is. Ask his name. It's Boris. I work in kitchen. You smile assuringly at him. Nice to meet you. Together we might make it out alive. You both continue running towards the living quarters. 
When you arrive at the living quarters, Roar states that he needs to get something from his room as well. You agree to meet at the entrance in five minutes. You then head to your room alone. Soon you arrive at the door. Open the door. You open the door to your room. There's no one there. There's a large knife lying on the top of your desk. You often use it to open letters or carve when you are bored. You grab the knife, figuring a weapon might come in handy. You catch a glint in the corner of your eye and look, look to find the golden locket. It is open and your daughter's face is smiling at you. You pause a moment before closing. I wonder why this is different almost every time. It in your pocket. As you grab the locket, something, something. Read over the charts. Okay, main body and it's moving. You study the chart for a few more moments, finally realizing that the chart displays a slight... Uh, yeah, it's coming at us. Leave the room. You wait at the agreed waiting point, but Burris doesn't show up. Your mind begins to wander as you wait. It's been five minutes, but he still has... He's still... And he's still not back yet. You begin to grow antsy. Leave him behind. It's been too long. You begin to leave and begin walking when you hear something behind you. Turn around. Comrade Victor, you pull the knife out of your pocket and clasp it behind your back as Boris walks up to you. He begins to eye you suspiciously. Were you going to leave me behind? Of course not. You lie and tell him that you are heading towards... You have to head towards the lifeboat now. You make sure that he's in front of you so that you can watch his every move. Head towards the lifeboat. You start heading towards the lifeboat with Boris. As you walk behind him and tighten your grip on the knife hidden behind your back, you begin to think... Why was I late? What should I do? What do you do? I should probably stab him. I want to stab him. I'm stabbing him. You slowly raise the knife above your head. As you begin to creep up on him, you are ready to plunge the blade into his back, but he suddenly turns around. You quickly hide the blade as he looks at you suspiciously. You all right there, comrade? I am fine. Keep going. He turns around and walks towards the lifeboat again. You f follow closely behind him. You put the knife away and think about what you are about to do. You were about to kill him. What if he it wasn't the creature? You, you would have been a murderer. Well, dang, maybe I want to be a murderer. You walk towards the lifeboat with him. Suddenly, you hear a loud bang echo through the halls of the ship. You think it's a gunshot. You both begin to run. You begin to notice blood trails going in and out of some of the rooms. The creep monster has been busy. You turn the corner and see the lifeboat. As the lifeboat comes into view, you feel a wave of relief wash over you. You can finally step, get out of here. However, your relief quickly fades as you hear shouting, see Captain Stepanov and one other person run around the corner. Victor, stop now! As Stepanov shouts, the crew member accompanying him points his gun at you. Raise your hands up. Stepanov and his lackey begins to run toward you. Gun still pointed directly at your chest, Stepanov growls at you. Bludged, you fucker! Starting a mutiny when monsters roam the ship? What is wrong with you? You split our forces. I had to kill crew members who was rigging ship to blow. They shot my guard. I didn't stop him in time. Ship will blow in five, 15 minutes. He gestures towards the soldier next to him. I almost lost Pavel here in the chaos, but I found him again. You attempt to convince Stepanov to leave. Stepanov, we have to go now. Stepanov cuts you off before you can finish. No, I not finish. He turns to Boris. I expected more from you, Boris. We will escape on the lifeboat, but both of you will be ex executed for your crimes. He signals for Pavel to shoot. Pavel freezes. Oh, we got a traitor achievement. Sick. 10 out of 13, boy. Pavel freezes. His head begins to twitch and black, warm like tendrils begin to flick out of his sleeves. You look over at Boris and the same thing is happening to him. You look at Stepanov and yell, RUN! Damn, I knew I should have stabbed him. As Stepanov re realizes what is happening, Pavel's arm transforms into a long, black, slender black blade, and it pales him on it. The tendril makes making up the blade wriggle as they begin to consume the captain from the inside out. Without even thinking, you sprint down the corridors, seeing the bodies of the other crew members strew about the ship. You see that some of the bodies have bullet wounds. You're unsure if they died because of the monster or because of the mutiny. What did you do? You began to slow down as you realize what you have done. You divided the crew. You started a mutiny. The crew killed each other and the monster picked off the stragglers. You fall to the floor and begin to sob. You hear a roar as the monster begins to approach you. 
But there is nothing left to fight it, fight it with. Nowhere to run, no one is to help you. You accept death. Death is all you deserve. Everyone is dead because of you. No, it's because of the monster. Stop blaming me, god dang it. Your selfishness killed the crew. Your inability to trust killed you. Look down at your hands. You can hear the footsteps approaching, but you don't look up. There's a hissing noise, and you feel a firm tug on the back of your clothes. You are lifted up off the floor. As you look upwards to your, at your captor, you see a black mass of ever-mutating worm-like strands. It is both solid and shapeless at the same time. You look into its black, soulless eyes and cause your close your eyes as it lets, lets out a blood-curdling shriek. Accept your fate. There's a deafening roar. In an instant, everything is white, and your entire body is enveloped in an excruciating, burning sensation. Then a comforting warmth envelops you. The monster shrieks, but more high-pitched and welling. It sounds as if it is dying. As you feel your body burn away, you realize what had happened. The explosives have gone off, and this is it. There is no way to survive the explosion. Even though you thought, no, you were about to die, you feel some comfort that the creature was caught in the blast. Close your eyes. As you close your eyes, ah, 11 out of 13 achievements. All sensations begin to fade away until you feel nothing, see nothing, or nothing. Sick. We made it. Alright, what's our last two achievements? Betrayal and hit a one. Okay, I know how to get one of them. Okay. There's one hidden achievement. That's gonna be a pain in the. Oh my god. That one's gonna be awful. I don't know what the hidden achievement is, but I know it's gonna suck. I know I have options. I know. Okay, I know one of them for sure. There's a second one, though, that I'm not sure. The hidden one, I have an idea, I think, but I'm not positive. But I've pretty much done all this. All I need to do now is stab Oberov, I think, and that's an achievement. So. Alright, so we gotta go through all this stuff, take Oberov with us, and then we gotta stab him. Do 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 do. I hope the last achievement isn't based off the paranoia, because that means I'm gonna have to do very specific things for it, which would suck. Keep on the lifeboat, but that chance is gone now. Follow Obrev. He pulls out a clinking bag. Time to go. Let's out an audible gasp. Armory. That's safe. Wait, we need supplies. And door. Head towards lifeboat. What if it replaces Oberev? You begin to think, what if it already got to Oberev? What if it replaced him? Will it know part of our plan? Does it somehow absorb our consciousness or parts of it? How does it know how to communicate? How did it act, know how to act so human? If it absorbs some of the knowledge of its prey, it could have easily already got Oberev and, been, and be waiting for me. Even so, the lifeboat is the, my only escape now. The lifeboat is just around the corner now. Turn the corner. Attack him! You take the knife out of your pocket and rush towards Oberev. Startled, he raises his hands up to defend himself, but your knife pierces his palm and goes straight into his heart. You let go of the knife and push Oberev away. He falls to the floor. Oberev coughs, splattering the floor with blood. Achievement. You bledged! With every word, blood streams down his skin. Can you see now? I not monster. As he violently coughs, you begin to realize that this was the real Oberev, and you just stabbed him. Breathing heavily, you rush towards the lifeboat and pull the switch to release the boat. There's a loud metallic clang as the boat jerks forward. The mechanism holding it in place does not release. Oberev chuckles as you begin to panic. Release is stuck. I could have fixed, but too late for that. Serves you right. Rotten hell. Oobliodoke word. Oberev looks at, lets out a mocking laugh and then closes his eyes. Moments later, his breathing stops. He is dead and you are alone. You notice the bag of tools next to him. Grab the bag! You grab the bag of tools and open the bag. You have no idea what any of these tools are, are or what they do, but you frantically grab one after another. You try each of the mechanisms to see if it will loosen the grip of, on the boat. Nothing seems to work. As you slump backwards against the rolling defeat, you hear a low roar from the other side of the boat. It heard you. You begin to sob. Blah, 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 I think I already got this ending. Oh, wait, this is different. You can hear footsteps approaching you, but you don't look up. There's a hissing noise, and you feel a form... You open your mouth to shout, Fuck ye! Suddenly, your body is enveloped by a burning sensation. As the explosion goes off, there's a deafening bang, and then nothing. Okay. 
So there's one achievement left. And I think I might know how to get it. Maybe. We'll see. Oh, wait. Go back. Wait. Oh, shit. I clicked. Oh, man. Dang it. Redo. I think I might know how to get it. Possibly. If not, this is going to be painful. Granted. Oh. Is there like a redo button? No. Whatever. Let's. I think it kind of assumes that I do click the red one, so maybe it's not that big a deal. Let's not click the red ones. I don't think I have to for the achievement. So what I think I need to do here is escape by myself, and then when I meet Oberev, I need to chase after him. I think that's an achievement. Oh, I hope that's an achievement. If not, damn. Else, da 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 da. Medical room, begin the second step, results of the blood test, report to the mess hall, something, something. He's eating potatoes with peas, which is freaking awful, apparently. Bad. Bad, you're enough. That's how you die. Stop him. Not of this world. Witnessed. We need to evacuate. There's a monster. We bring everyone. Alright. Shape on your own. Open the door. When you are done, you leave the room. You arrive at the door to your room, open the door, read over the charts, leave the room. A hulking mess of right. Wait a second. Creature. Wait. You immediately dart around the corner with your mouth over your hand, desperately trying to muffle your sound. After a moment, you take the cord to peek your head around the corner, but the monster is nowhere to be found. Wait. Suddenly, you hear. Your breathing comes and you listen to them die. Chase after Oberev. Catch up to the figure as you get closer. You see what that it does in fact look like Oberev, but is it really him? Reach out to him. Oberev turns around and looks up, looks at you with suspicion as you run up to him. Hold up, Truvac. Stay right there. He begins backing up from you. He doesn't trust you. Attempt to convince you. Him. Oberev, it's me, Victor. I am not monster. Oberev eyes you suspiciously, looking up you up and down before responding. If you are not monster, prove it. Okay, so I might have to come back here, but I think I'm on the right track. Tell him about my daughter. You take your locket out of your pocket. <laughs> that rhymes. Locket pocket. And show him in the picture of your daughter. Your eyes got a little teary as you begin to explain. This is Maya. She is my daughter. I need to go back to her, and I think I might need help to do that, please. Oberev's stance becomes a little bit more relaxed as you explain. Suddenly, you hear a roar. Without even thinking, you jump into the nearest room and pull Oberev inside with you. As you close the door, it turns to pitch black. There's a tiny hole in the door that lets out a small beam of light. You hear footsteps as the creature passes through the hall. Peer through the hole. Yes, we got it! Body Snatcher achievement! Fuck! Yeah, baby! We got them all, baby! That's 13 out of 13. Holding your breath, you peer through the hole and look out- Dang, we did that! Ah, oh, expert, baby! Let's go! And look out the hall. At first, you can hear- see, You can't see anything as you look into the hallway. But soon, a writhing mass of black worm steps in front of the hole. You feel your whole body freeze as the creature looks around. It begins- its body begins to pulse and its shape begins to mutate. Slowly it morphs into a man-like appearance, gradually changing colors. When it is done, you realize that it just morphed into the man you only saw moments before. You back away. You hear the monster walk away before it goes completely silent. Oberev looks through the hole before letting out a deep breath. Well, I guess if creature is out there, it couldn't be you. Listen, I have a plan. Oberev flicks the switch. Illuminating the room, you squint as your eyes adjust the light. Looking around, you see a supply closet. You look down and see Oberev is holding something. It's explosives. What are you doing with that? I'm gonna rig the ship to blow. That's what. This That thing killed my friend, so I returned the favor. I have to already- I already planted some explosives on engine to make ship dead in water. But I need you to plant explosives in hull to ensure it sinks. While you plant them, I will fix engine and lifeboat. Can you do that? Yes. Yes, I can. Good. Good idea. I can count on you. When you get to the front of ship, arm bomb for 15 minutes. Oberev hands you explosives. The both of you nod to each other before slowly exiting the closet. Head to the front of the ship. You dash towards the ladder that leads to the lower deck of the ship. As you descend, the pair of Meshnik and 
Groves, groans followed by the sound of scratching metal. The ship is scratching, scraping against the ice. No one is steering. You plant the explosives on the wall and arm it to explode 20 minutes from now. He said 15, son. He said 15. You, oh my god. There is a beep as the time starts up. Head towards the lifeboat. As you run, your mind begins to wander frantically. As your mind races, you begin to seriously ponder. Is it watching me? You know it used to the vents earlier. Could it possibly be watching you from one of them? If it could turn into humans, could it be some? Could it turn into something smaller, like a rat? No, that's impossible. You can't just destroy or create mass. It has to turn into something of equal size. That goes against physics, unless... You remember the two creatures you saw earlier. You aren't sure, but you think they may have been slightly smaller than the original. Did it split into two different organisms? Is that how it reproduces? Is there a limit to how small it could split? You shudder at the thought and begin to run faster. The lifeboat is just around the corner. Turn the corner. The lifeboat is now in view. Blah, blah, blah. We already got this before. Wait. He is anxiously fidgeting with his wrench before he finally sees you. He begins to smile grimly as you get closer. You slow down, stopping altogether. You can't help think about how the creature can mimic anyone. What took you so long? Well, hurry on in. The ship is about to blow in 20 minutes. Oberev stops for a second, looks at you inquisitively. What's wrong? Is it really you? What are you saying? Okay, we already got this before. This is the good ending. But we got all the achievement, guys. So as always, it's kind of cool. We got to this like, ending we started with to get to the end again. But um, yeah, I don't think you guys need me to read this again. We already got this. This is where we escape and we go home together. But I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching as always, guys. Bye!